starting its flow. Nursing assistants are not responsible to start, adjust, or discontinue the flow rate of oxygen, but you still need a working knowledge of how oxygen is used. You may have specific assignments related to a, the appropriate handling or cleaning of the equipment. Always follow your facilities policies and procedures for the responsibilities that you will have with oxygen therapy. Oxygen may be supplied by piped in wall outlets, freestanding tanks, or what are called oxygen concentrators. Wall outlets have a flow of oxygen that is regulated by a flow gauge. An oxygen tank has a flow meter and a pressure gauge that indicates the amount of oxygen remaining in the tank. Oxygen concentrators concentrate the oxygen from the room air. Because oxygen can be very drying, it may go through distilled water in what's called a humidifier before reaching the patient. This will certainly be the case if the flow rate of oxygen is four to six liters or more, or if the patient is complaining of dryness or irritation in their nose. The water level must be kept at the proper level indicated on the side of the humidifier. Oxygen is usually administered by either a nasal cannula or a face mask. A nasal cannula is a more comfortable method of oxygen administration. Oxygen flows through the two prongs inserted into the nostrils. The tubing loops up over the ears and under the chin to keep it in place. The nasal prongs are inserted directly into the nostrils. A face mask is used in an emergency situation when the oxygen needs are higher than that which can be provided with the use of a nasal cannula. The mask is also used if the cannula is not staying in place or if the patient is a mouth breather. The mask is placed over both the mouth and nose and is fitted to the nose with a metal uh, nose piece. The mask is held in place by an elastic headband that is secured around the head and connected to a source of oxygen by a length of oxygen tubing. The patient who has oxygen has special needs. Make sure that the elastic band does not create pressure on the ears or head. Adjust the face mask so that it fits snugly to help the patient receive the amount of oxygen ordered. Wipe collected moisture out of the face mask with a damp cloth each shift. Check the nasal cannula to ensure that they are clean and not irritating to the nostrils. Wipe the prongs with a damp cloth. Pad the top of the ears to prevent any irritation from the tubing. Both the cannula and a face mask will be changed by the nurse or a respiratory therapist at least on a weekly basis. Give good oral hygiene frequently to these patients with oxygen. This means about every four hours because oxygen dries the mucous membranes of the mouth and nose and that can result in cracking of the lips and mouth. Use lubrication to the lips and mouth as well as to the nose with non-petroleum based lubricant. Keep the oxygen tubing free of kinks so that the flow of oxygen is not obstructed. Observe the flow rate to ensure that it is operating properly. If a humidifier canister is being used, be sure that the correct level of distilled water is maintained in the jar and that the water is bubbling as the oxygen passes through it. Report any problems to the nurse immediately. Always follow the rules for oxygen safety. Do not allow any smoking. Do not use any woolen blankets. Do not use electrical appliances. 
um, with these patients with oxygen and be sure that you post an oxygen safety sign outside the patient room. The vital functions of the body tell us much about the patient's health status. Special care must be taken to report any alterations immediately to the nurse, so prevention of serious problems and early intervention can be provided.